Welcome to the 15th video on building a social network with Go. In this one, we are adding real time capabilities to our back end. Let's start by making the timeline real time. I'll start by adding a method to subscribe to it. This returns a Go channel. First, I check for authentication. Then, I create the channel. I want to store this channel somewhere, so I can send timeline items to it, when new ones are created. I'll make a client struct. Now, I will store this client. I think I will use a map of clients right on our service struct. I will use a sync map because we are using channels and go routines. So, let's keep all in sync. I will use the client itself as the key, and an empty struct as value. Now, I will use the context to know when it's done, and remove the client from the map and close the channel. That should be. Now, let's add a method to broadcast timeline items to the clients. I will iterate over each client. And if the user IDs match, I will send the timeline item to its channel. Because the sync map doesn't use concrete types, make sure you have the correct type when you do the assertion, or it will panic. With that done, let's do the same for comments. I will copy paste and change accordingly. This time, it doesn't require authentication. So I'll get rid of the error. Now, you subscribe by post ID. But I will have the user ID in case the user is authenticated, to omit his own comments. Done. Let's do the broadcast method now. Same. I will copy paste and change accordingly. Seems like the variable names collide. Let's rename the client. So, we filter by post ID, and by user ID if any. That should be. Let me rename the client here as well to keep it concise. Let's do the same for the notifications. More copy paste.
Done. This was exactly like with the timeline. Let's do the broadcast method now. Done. It was just the same. Now, I just need to call these broadcast method, when a new timeline item, comment or notification is created. Good thing I left to do comments. Here. Actually, I don't need that slice. I can broadcast it directly. And that covers all. Let's make the HTTP handlers now. I will reuse the endpoint. But handle it differently, depending on the accept header. If it accepts an event stream, I will do the subscription thing. I will stream back using server sent events. First, I check if the response writer can flush its content. This is necessary for streaming. Then, I subscribe. I handle the errors. Set some headers to indicate that this is a server send event. And we can get each timeline item from the channel using A for range. I will send them in JSON format. I think I'll move this code into its own function. This is the format used to write server send events. After writing one server sent event, you need to flush anything that is on the response writer. Okay, let's quickly do the same for the other endpoints. For the comments, I don't need to handle errors. But I need to get the post ID from the URL path. That is it. Now, 
Notifications. Done. Now, let's go and test it. I will log in as John and get its token. The reason it's because the VS Code extension I'm using doesn't get server sent events. So I'll make the request manually with curl. Here, I'm creating a post as Jane. It should be broadcasted to John's timeline. There it is. Now, I will try to create a post with the test user. Test isn't a followee of John, so no timeline item should be broadcasted. Good. Let's test the comments now. John will subscribe to comments on the post with ID 1. And when someone comments, it gets streamed. Let me test if it works without authentication. It does. Now, let's try notifications. When someone mentions John, he receives a notification in real time. Very nice. And that should cover the real time part. Now the server works in real time for the things that matter most. That's the end of this video. See you in the next one.